Input validation is important when developing a REST API. Thankfully, Spring Boot has a starter dependency that makes the process straightforward. However, if you are using Kotlin, there is a pitfall that you need to be careful with. In this project, we are going to add a basic validation to a Kotlin project and also discuss the root cause of this pitfall. If you find this content interesting, please like and subscribe. It makes a big difference. Thanks. This is the project that we are going to use for uh, validation. It's just a basic uh, Spring Boot project. It, the only relevant dependency is Spring Boot Starter Web. And uh, the application file is uh, boilerplate. And it has this accounts controller um, on the path for accounts with two endpoints. There is one that returns all the accounts in the system and returns a hard-coded list and one post endpoint that is used for creating an account. And uh, this takes as input this bean uh, data class with a field called name. And uh, this, this is the field that we are actually going to validate. If, if you want to see how we created this project step by step, I will add a link uh, in the video description to my YouTube video or at, the, at a card at the top. Uh, anyway, let's uh, start this project and um, try the post method in uh, Postman. So the project has started and we see we have the path localhost 8080 accounts method post. So we just pass the name, let's see ABC, we send the request and we receive the account that was created. Of course, the ID is hard coded and the name is uh, what we passed as input. And um, the first uh, thing that we need to do is uh, just stop the project for now and add an, an, um, another um, dependency to our Gradle file. And the dependency will be Spring Boot Starter Validation. This will add the Hibernate Validator. If you are creating the project from scratch using Spring Initializer, you need to add here validation and if you look at the Gradle file, you will see that it, it added the same dependency. And um, in here, once we change the Gradle file, we need to refresh it in IntelliJ. And um, it takes a few seconds. So now if we go back to our controller, um, it, and if you followed the um, tutorial, the Java tutorials on, on the internet, what they say that you need to do is to add your um, add your annotation for the validator in here. So Java X validation constraint size. And um, we're gonna give two arguments here, minimum of two, maximum of five. So this, uh, this is a validator for strings. It makes sure that the string is uh, at least two characters long and at most five characters. So they say that you need to add this annotation here and also the valid annotation in the um, request in, in your endpoint function before, before request body. However, if, you, if we rebuild the module and we try it out, let's uh, verify. So let, let's just make a request with one character Okay, so the server is not running. We need to start it, of course. And if we send this request, we will see that it goes through. So the validation didn't work. Now, uh, the quick fix is um, we need in here just to, to add like what we are validating. In this case, a field would work. So now we rebuild this one. Okay. And if we send a request again, yeah, we see we, we get bad request and it says validation failed for argument, etc. And in here we will see errors and it says size must be between two and five which is uh, what we expected if we if we do um, two characters it's fine if we do um, f 
five characters is fine and if we add six characters we get the same uh, bad request again which is what we expected and now um, let's discuss why this happens so if we search for kotlin annotations this explains uh, this goes a bit explains a bit what how annotations work so basically annotations have this uh, target uh, it specifies the possible kinds of elements with which can be annotated with the annotations such as classes function properties etc in in our case this uh, size annotation if we hover over it we see that it can annotate methods fields annotation type constructors parameters and um, use and um, they say here that whenever whenever we here in, in instantiation so when you're annotating a, a property or a primary constructor parameter there are multiple java elements which are generated and therefore and therefore multiple possible locations for the annotation in the generated bytecode so uh, kotlin in this case it, it cannot infer that uh, this size that this uh, annotation size need to be applied to a field so here it says that if you don't specify a use site target the target is chosen according to target annotation if there are multiple ap applicable targets the first applicable target from the following list is used so parameter property field and we see that size actually applies to parameter let's type f1 yeah so it, it applies to parameter so it will apply to that one and it won't in what it won't affect the field and that's why we need to specify the field now we can also apply it on the getter so if we build this one again we will see that it also works so let's add another character there we see that we get bad requests again and but if we if we remove this um, target we and we rebuild and uh, we set the request uh, we see that it, it no longer applies now um we can also there are other annotators that you can look into it to to match uh, whatever you need to validate so let's just do if we search for java x validation constraints we will see here that we have um we have annotations for maximum the annotated element must be a number value so this applies to numbers minimum as well um not null size which is the one we used we can also have patterns for characters etc you you can look into all of them that's it for today i will link the source code in the video description see you next time